Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Allegedly Bravo. Um, This is going to be a little mini episode this week. Um, We're going to be talking all about Ariana Maddox, our queen icon legend, and the the many lawsuits that this woman seems to find herself in and i will have to say like i'm on her side in all of all of them question mark i want to know whose side you're on in all of these but we're going to start off with ariana's lawsuit against tom it's about tom it's always freaking about tom right So let's get into it. This is Ariana's complaint against Tom Sandoval. And what she's asking for is a partition of their real property. It's like, okay, what does that even mean? So basically what a partition is, is there, you know, two kinds of ways you can split a property if you own it with a bunch of different people. One way is you ask the court to sell the property and you split the money. Another way you can do this is if you have like a big piece of land, like a hundred acres, and there's four of you who co-own the property, the court can actually split it up into four pieces and that's called a partition in kind. So Ariana is bringing this lawsuit against Tom and she's asking the court for a partition by sale. So she's saying, let's sell this motherfucker. Let's be done with it. Let's take the money and split it. And she's like, it's, you know, nearly impossible to do a partition in kind because what are you going to do? Like, you can't cut the house in half. We can't say, okay, Tom gets the downstairs, Ariana gets the upstairs or the left side or the right side. So the only option here, according to Ariana, is we got to sell this house and court, you have to order it sold. I mean, sounds about right to me. So her complaint is really simple. She just describes the property and she says, listen, this is what's going on. I own this property with Tom. Tom and I live here together. We both have an undivided interest in the property. This bank over here has two deeds of trust uh, encumbering the property, which just means there's probably a mortgage and a second mortgage, which doesn't surprise me because Tom, Tom and... Schwartz and Sandys and all that, like seems kind of expensive and, um, people need money and your house is your biggest asset. So a lot of people borrow against their house. There's nothing wrong with that. According to me, I'm not Susie Orman, but maybe if you asked her, she'd think things were different. Anyway, Ariana says, we're going to just sell this property, be done, divide the money. And, and I got to go my own way. Tom Sandoval, on the other hand, is like, you know what? You know what? I don't know necessarily if that's what I want to do. So he goes through and basically when you get a complaint, I think we've already talked about this before, um, and you have to answer the complaint if you're ever in a lawsuit, you have to answer each paragraph, each number in that lawsuit. Um, you know, this is not legal advice. I'm just describing to you why it says things like defendant admits the allegation contained in paragraph six of the complaint. Okay. They just have to admit or deny everything. That's the way the cookie crumbles. So Tom goes on and he says, okay, this is a single family residence. That's all I'm going to admit. I do have an undivided one half interest. And Tom says he's also entitled to an accounting and compens, compens, oh my God, that's, why is that hard? Why is that hard word? Why is that word hard? Defendant is entitled to an accounting and compensatory adjustment for expenditures in excess of defendant's fractional share for necessary repairs, improvements that enhance the value of the subject property, taxes, principal, and interest, blah, 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 blah. Basically, Tom's like, I paid more than half of all of these improvements, like anything we did to make the house better, I paid for more than half of that. And so even if you do say, judge, that we have to sell this whole house and split it, I'm actually owed some money off the top of that sale because I've just paid for way more than Ariana has in regards to improvements. And you know what? Maybe that's true. I don't know what improvements have been done on that house. I mean, it looks like one of those just like newer houses that's just out there in the valley that's like 
classic farmhouse. I mean, if you see, if you see one, you've seen them all and that seems like their house. I'm sure they've done things to it, but it also seemed like in the episodes that Ariana more so decorated the house and paid for most of those decorations. So, hmm, very interesting in my opinion. I don't know. All right, let's take a quick break and get into the next story. Okay, welcome back. We are talking all about Ariana and her many lawsuits. And one of those lawsuits isn't technically a lawsuit yet, but I definitely see it heading that way in the very near future. And that would be Ariana and Katie versus Chef Penny. Ooh. So when I first heard about this lawsuit, I was like, okay, everyone's making a big deal out of a whole lot of nothing. And then I like read stuff, hashtag educated myself. And I was like, oh my God, Chef Penny. She has a point in my opinion, but she's a little Delulu. Like part of me sees where she's, let's get into it. I'll tell you, and then I'll tell you my opinions. And then I want to hear your opinions. Okay. So it's no news to us, but for all the people who are tuning in, who maybe aren't Bravo BFFs and maybe don't know everything about these people. Katie and Ariana are both characters on Vanderpump Rules. They both dated Tom and Tom, who are this other pair of just like degenerate morons who opened a restaurant together. Both of these women broke up with these losers, and now they want to enter a, a like into a restaurant business called Something About Her Sandwich Shop. So Ariana and Katie get this whole idea together. It's so cute. It's supposed to be like Nancy Myers-esque sandwich shop, but they need a little help because they've worked in restaurants all their lives. And Katie, I think she like grew up in a restaurant. I, I feel like her mom managed a restaurant that Katie was like always at because her mom, you know, her mom managed it. So I'm sure she was there all the time. Um, so they have some, a lot of restaurant experience, but They wanted to bring on someone, I guess, with a little more restaurant experience. So they brought in this woman named Chef Penny. Now, by all accounts on the internet, Chef Penny has been referred to as a celebrity chef. So I don't know. And here's, and this is what I want to know. Is a celebrity chef a chef that is a celebrity or a chef that cooks for celebrities? Because I think the term celebrity chef is ambiguous ambiguous and really leaves a lot open to the imagination as to how is Penny holding herself? Is she holding herself as a celebrity who cooks or is she holding herself as a chef for celebrities to eat her food? I don't know. Um, I think she was on like the food network. So I would guess she holds herself out to be the celebrity that cooks. But I bet there is crossover too. I bet she's a celebrity that cooks for other celebrities. I mean, she cooked for Lisa Vanderpump. So maybe she's a celebrity chef that cooks for celebrities. She's very talented, that Chef Penny. But anyway, Katie and Ariana said, okay, we needed Chef Penny's help. So we brought her on as the COO, Chief Operating Officer. So that just means like making sure everything's under control. All the boxes are checked. We're operating in the right direction. We're making money. We're making money moves like, you know, then the chief of operations. And also they wanted her to head the back of the house. Well, that makes sense. If she's a celebrity chef that cooks for other celebrities, of course, she should manage the back of the house, right? She's, she's the chef. Duh. So anyway, they said, all right, we'll bring you on. You're going to do those two things. But then there became a misunderstanding. As soon as they brought her on, there was this whole misunderstanding of what would Penny's role be in something about her. I mean, to me, it sounds like she's going to be the COO and head of the back of the house. But what Chef Penny read was, I'm actually going to own 10% of the brand and retain 10% of the profits. And I'm a partner in this business. 
oopsies. I don't necessarily think that's what Katie and Ariana were thinking at all. Um, and that's what they maintain that they weren't thinking that, but chef Penny actually says this whole entire thing was captured on Vanderpump rules. The cameras were there. The cameras caught the whole formation of this relationship um, and yet none of it was played and all of Chef Penny was edited out of Vanderpump Rules. And I will just say Chef Penny respectfully with all due, and I mean this with all due, um, I don't think you are going to be on Vanderpump Rules. I, you're just the type. You're not the type. You're not the type to be on Vanderpump Rules. So maybe they edited out your storyline or maybe it wasn't supposed to be there. Maybe both, but I don't know. I wasn't down for like a Chef Penny talking head. Were you throwing her martini around? No, I don't think so. But anyway, her story was edited out of Vanderpump Rules, which is interesting to me also because I think if this whole storyline really were a big part of the something about her brand and the opening up of this restaurant, I think that it would have been included because they wanted to film stuff with Ariana and it, wouldn't it make sense to film this drama in her new business? It's like, okay, well, her whole life is turned upside down. If she has drama in her business and drama in her personal life and she's traveling everywhere, it's like, that would have been a great storyline. So either the producers didn't, didn't want that to be the storyline or that just simply didn't happen because I think if it did happen and the producers could have used that whole penny thing to really give Ariana a better storyline that wasn't just, I hate my ex. And it would have been, you know, it did nobody any favors to not include it. If you ask me, if it, if it was really there, you know, but Penny says her entire story was edited out that Penny also says that Ariana and Katie sent an email to chef Penny saying that Chef Penny owns 10% of the business and 10% of the gross earnings. Apparently that is an entire email. Okay. And what I want to know is if that is apparently an entire email, where is it? And how come we don't have like a picture of that email or like a I don't know, like a screenshot of any kind. And the reason why I ask is because it has to do a little more with the trademark and I'll get into that. So another issue that comes up with something about her is that the trademark of something about her is actually owned by Chef Penny and her husband's LLC. So a little bit ago, I believe I got on the horn and I started saying like, yeah, but maybe Ariana and Katie own a portion of the LLC. So I wasn't that worried because a lot of times businesses own trademarks and I didn't see there to be a big deal there. Well, then I changed my mind and how quickly education does things like that to a girl because my mind is completely different now. There is, and I'm going to show you guys, there are text messages from Katie and I guess just Katie, but in between Katie and chef Penny in a group though, let me just, let me just show you. So if you look at this text message, AKA exhibit a over here, it's a group message purportedly between chef Penny, Katie and Ariana. And I found this on the internet. Okay. It was like, I forget what the, what the link was, but I think it was like the U S sun or something. Um, so they, Penny puts these screenshots forward and this is a text message. It's a group message between the three girlies. Katie sends a cute ass apron. Penny doesn't respond to the apron, but she goes, guys, is something about her trademarked? Katie Maloney goes, no. Okay. Katie Maloney goes, no, something about her is not trademarked. Okay, fine. Well, then it's what happens next that I think is the kicker because here you have the next message from Chef Penny and you can read along if you can see my screen. Okay, we will need to get that done too. Jonathan asked, Jonathan's Chef Penny's husband. 
Okay, Jonathan will do this for us, who's also a lawyer. Okay, Jonathan will do this for us once we wrap up our deal. Can you guys jump on the joint call with the attorneys Thursday? I know Ari is out. Okay, so she just basically took the horn and said, oh, Jonathan will just get this whole trademark situation done. Okay, well, it doesn't. And then the very next message is about responding to the apron saying, let's buy one of these and I can send it to the team in China to cost out and duplicate. Okay. So she has enough time to be like, let's send this out to China, get a cheap quote on getting seven of these made for the seven people who are going to serve these sandwiches, like just buy seven, whatever. Um, But it seems like she just kind of told Jonathan, her husband to go ahead and get the whole thing trademarked. But the rest of the conversation was just Katie Maloney saying, okay. And nothing in the conversation said something like, and we'll have it held in my LLC. And my LLC with my husband will be the owner of the trademark. And I think that's a little fishy and sneaky. And I'm not here for that. So I don't know. So Penny says that she's the one who's been dealing with everyone. She's been dealing with the city and the landlord and meeting people at get this 2 a.m. What? To get this place opened. And I want to know, Penny, who are you meeting in West Hollywood at 2 a.m.? For a business deal. Who are you meeting? Elaborate. Um, but yeah, so what I want to know is why we have the text messages talking about the trademark, talking about the apron. Penny says that they have the email showing that they have a partnership and that she's supposed to get 10% of the brand and the proceeds, but doesn't include that email at all. But what the parties do. And by the parties, I mean Ariana, Katie, and um, Chef Penny. What they all three agree on is there is no contract. So that will be very interesting if this does turn into a lawsuit um, to figure out like, okay, well, there's no contract. So who, what is the relationship between these people? Is there a partnership? Is there not? And what is each person owed? And I think that's quite interesting. Okay, let's take another break, and then we are going to get into it with the revenge porn lawsuit update. Okay, welcome back. We're getting into the revenge porn lawsuit between Rachel Levis, Ariana Maddox, and Tom Zenzaval. So let's talk about it. First of all, everyone was talking about the fact that Ariana filed a motion to have the complaint struck. And I don't know about you, but I didn't hear anything about Tom's motion. Um, Either people didn't notice or they didn't care, but Tom also filed a motion to have part of the complaint struck. However, his reasons and the paragraphs that he wants struck are interesting to me because he bases his off of um, like he bases why he wants his paragraph struck from the complaint because he's like they're irrelevant or they're not true. Whereas Ariana bases the reasons why she wants the complaint struck as anti-slap, which if you go listen to Lizzo, we get into what is anti-slap. So let's talk about what paragraphs does Tom Sandoval want struck from Raquel's revenge porn complaint. So the first one is he wants this totally removed, blacked out, whited out, thrown away. 
Levis is informed and believes, and on such information and belief alleges, that in performing the acts herein alleged, Sandoval acted with oppression, fraud, and malice, or alternatively, that Sandoval acted in such conscious disregard of Levis's right to privacy that as a direct and proximate result of his collective and individual acts, Levis is entitled to punitive damages and an amount to be determined at trial to punish him and deter him from such conduct in the future. Yeah. Tom's like, get that out of here. We don't want punitive damages. I don't want to be punished for my behavior. He says, no, that's false. And um, no one would ever believe that. So remove it. Okay. And then second, he wants this one removed. Levis is informed and believes and on such information and belief alleges that in performing the acts alleged herein, Sandoval acted with oppression, fraud, malice, or alternatively that Sandoval acted in such conscious disregard to Levis's right to privacy that as a direct and proximate resolved of the collective and individual acts, Levis is entitled to punitive damages, blah, 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 blah. So she, he also wants this punitive damages clause to be removed. Um, the third is basically the same exact paragraph. So I won't like be super redundant with this. The fourth thing he wants removed is for special damages, according to proof and for an award of punitive or exemplary damages, according to proof. So at this point, Tom is just grasping at straws saying, um, can you strike these because you don't have any proof that you can even get punitive damages? And it's like, dude, come on. Like that, those are the parts of the complaint you want struck. Not like the factual parts that say that you like screen recorded this woman touching herself. I mean, come on in levels of undress. I believe the complaint says now Ariana, she also filed a motion to strike and we got to get into that too. Ariana had a motion to strike all three causes of action. So she was like, not just paragraphs. I want the whole fucking section struck. And she's like, and you know what? And also pay my attorney's fees and costs, which we learned in the Lizzo episode that in California, um, you're allowed to recover attorney's fees and costs if you win anti-slap motions. So Ariana brings an anti-slap motion and she's saying that whatever it is that Ariana is accused of doing, all of that behavior came from Ariana exercising her freedom of speech. And also, in addition to the fact that this was freedom of speech, Rachel can't establish with any reasonable probability that she will prevail at trial. Okay, fair. I mean, I I like that argument way better than Tom's, don't you? She's like, first of all, it's my fucking right. It's my right to call you a little bitch rat. And second of all, you won't even win at trial. So suck it. Um, And she also compares or she brings this whole thing up where she's like, remember in the Lizzo episode, we talked about what's a matter of public concern and how Lizzo was a public figure. Ariana brings up the same point. She's like, first of all, Rachel's a public figure. She's a public person. She's been in the spotlight. And when you put yourself in the spotlight, this is a quote from Ariana's motion. When you put yourself in the spotlight, you subject yourself to inevitable scrutiny. And that's true. And she's been on this. Uh, Raquel has been on Rachel. Sorry, has been on the show for years and years. She's a topic of conversation. She's had conversations about her relationships with um dj james kennedy she got engaged on the tv show she you know got broken up with on the tv show she talked about her sex life on the tv show all this stuff like happened on tv and so she's made all of this these parts of her life a matter of public concern because us the public who are watching these shows are super interested and we're like, well, wait a minute, you and Tom did some things that are a matter of public concern because we're watching the show and you guys are characters in it and it's about a relationship. And so, eh, you know, anything I did was my First Amendment right to do so. And I almost have to agree with Ariana. Um, 
But what I think is the fun part here is when Ariana filed her motion to strike those parts of the complaint, she filed a declaration and a declaration is a statement that is sworn under oath, cross your heart, hope to die, stick 10 needles in your eye. That is true under penalty of perjury. And I will have you know that what Ariana filed is the exact story Bible truth as to what happened the night of the revenge porn incident. Okay. And so I'm going to read it. So if you're watching the video, you can read this on the screen. If you're not watching the video, have no fear, baby girl or baby boy. I'm going to read it to you. Declaration of Ariana Maddox. I, Ariana Maddox, declare I am the defendant in this action. I make this declaration in support of the special motion to strike blah, blah, blah filed concurrently. I have personal knowledge of the matter stated herein, except where stated on information and belief. And if called to a witness and if called as a witness, I would and could competently testify there too. So she's saying, I'm writing this all down. If you want to bring me to the stand, I'll do it. So ready. As of March 1st, 2023, I have the chills. I had been in a committed relationship with defendant Tom Sandoval for over nine years. During the evening of March 1st, 2023, I went to a club in West Hollywood, Tom Tom, to see Mr. Sandoval's band play. While playing, Mr. Sandoval's phone fell from his pocket and a mutual friend handed it to me. Because we had been in a committed relationship for so long and because we trusted one another and presumably did not keep secrets from one another, I knew many of Tom's of Mr. Sandoval's passcodes, including the one for his phone. I previously accessed Mr. Sandoval's phone on other occasions with his knowledge and consent. Okay. So she's like, yeah, I snuck into his phone. All right. He's my fucking boyfriend. You would have too, if you were me. So she goes on by saying, For reasons I still do not know, call it a woman's intuition. When the set ended, I felt the need to check Mr. Sandoval's phone and I went into the women's restroom for privacy. Okay, we've all been there, you know, where you're just like, oh, shit, it's right fucking there. It's right here. And I know the password and I have to know everything that's in there. If you trust your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your partner, you're kind of like, whatever, I don't, I don't really care. But when you know there's something on that phone, and I would call it women's intuition, like you have to open it. You have to look in there. So she did. So she went to the women's restroom for privacy and good for her. She's entitled to her privacy. So she was in a locked stall. Ariana continues under oath, cross her heart, hope to die, Bible swears. In a locked stall, I accessed Mr. Sandoval's phone and saw text conversations between Mr. Sandoval and plaintiff, Rachel, that appeared incomplete because portions of them had been deleted, which made me suspicious. I would be so suspicious too if I were like going through my boyfriend's phone and it was like, okay, you deleted some things. What's going on here? Hmm? So, okay. While other women waited to use the toilet. So she's like, I knew there was a line and guess what? I didn't care. I let them wait. And I opened up the photo app on Mr. Sandoval's phone and was shocked to find a video of a FaceTime call between Mr. Sandoval and Rachel that showed Mr. Sandoval's face in the upper corner while the main image was of plaintiff. I hurriedly took out my own phone and made two recordings of the FaceTime video. Prior to that moment, I considered plaintiff a friend and I didn't know that she and Mr. Sandoval were having an affair. Oh, my God. Okay. So I'm picturing it. I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom stall. I'm like, oh my God, there's a line, but I see these videos. If I give this back to Tom, he's going to delete them all. I got to, I got to film these on my phone for proof. Snaps two videos, keeps them in her phone, blah, blah, blah. (sighs) Okay. So Ariana continues under oath. I left the bathroom and walked up to Mr. Sandoval. Can you picture it? 
I left the bathroom and walked up to Mr. Sandoval, who asked if I wanted to go in the alley for a cigarette. A cigarette? I would have needed a lot more than a fucking cigarette if I found that on my boyfriend's phone. Imagine. George Glass would never. He would never. Okay. In the alley, I confronted Mr. Sandoval about his affair with plaintiff. Pause. That is interesting because if you guys have been following this story, you know that when Sheena found out about Tom and Raquel's affair, I believe they were also in an alley. So there were, I mean, the alley just does mean a lot to Vanderpump rules. If you've been watching, like, you know, conversations in the alley, um, it just, everything happens in the alley, you know, and without the alley, like we wouldn't have Vanderpump rules. It just wouldn't be as fun or as wholesome as it is. And so I think this conversation happening in the alley and also the Sheena Raquel conversation happening in a completely other alley on the other side of the country, one in New York and one in Los Angeles, like, oh my God, this is titillating. And we know this is true because this is under oath. So I believe hashtag believe women. I believe Ariana's story a hundred percent. I mean, she, she swore under penalty of perjury that this was true. So Ariana continues and she goes, I'll start from the one up in the alley. I confronted Mr. Sandoval about his affair with Raquel concerned that people might overhear us. Mr. Sandoval tried to move me away from the club. Don't you put your hands on me, you cheating son of a bitch. Around the same time, I sent the videos I recorded to Rachel, along with a text message reading, you're dead to me. A true and correct copy of the screenshot of that message is attached here too as exhibit one. Scroll. Okay, if you're watching the video, you know right now I have this text message a full color screenshot pulled up on my screen. It starts with Ariana texting Raquel and it says, we are going to watch the watch what happens live episode. Now Raquel goes, Oh, nice. I'm trying to find the whole episode on YouTube right now, but I don't think it's out yet. And Ariana goes, same. It's not on Peacock, but if you have spectrum, it'll be on at three laughing, crying face emoji. Raquel, ah, uh, 40 more minutes. Okay, Saturday, February 25th at 10.01 p.m. Raquel, yay, I'm happy you're coming with Brad and Jamie. Then nothing. Then it goes Wednesday, 9.37 p.m. Ariana, you are dead to me. Friday, okay, two days later, Friday at almost 9 p.m., 8.56 p.m. Raquel goes, Ariana, I did don't know what to say right now besides I really fucked up and I am so, so, so sorry. Ariana's response is simply, shut the fuck up, you fucking rat. And then at 9.06 p.m., Ariana officially stopped sharing her location with Raquel Levis. Whew. That's the end of a fucking era. The second you stop sharing location, I feel like it's like, oh. Oh, we're over, over. Oh, okay. I recently went through my find my friends after I saw, um, Sheena was talking about how she was like finding, watching, find her friends to see where all her friends ended up after the bar. And I just like went through my find my friends to be like, do I want all these people knowing where I am all the time? And there were some people I forgot I was sharing my location with. And I'm just like, oh, Better end that indefinitely. So, yeah, I mean, that's a big move when you finally stop sharing location. That's like, that's like the last, that's the last bobby pin in the carpet. You know, the last thing to really get picked up when you move out. Ugh. Yeah. I think I'm having a trauma flashback right now. But anyway, so Ariana continues. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I didn't send the videos to anyone else, nor did I share, display, or show the videos to anyone else. To be clear, I only saw the video of plaintiff masturbating in places secluded from others, i.e. 
alone in the bathroom stall and in the alley with Mr. Sandoval. I had to burp, so sorry. A heated argument ensued between me and Mr. Sandoval. Oh, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine the fight that would erupt upon finding that video in your boyfriend's phone. Like, oof. So a heated argument ensued between me and Mr. Sandoval. Mr. Sandoval forcibly grabbed my phone from my hands, causing my credit cards and driver's license to fall to the pavement. Okay, dick. You don't get to be like that. You're the one in trouble here. You don't get to throw her things. Ariana says, I quickly grabbed my cards off the pavement and chase after Mr. Sandoval, who had further distanced himself from the club. So, so I'm reading this as they're in the alley. Tom grabs Ariana's phone. The and I'm sure she has one of these little pocket things, you know, that we all have. And her phone, her credit card flying out, her ID flying out. He's booking it down the street with her phone. She's like, I got to pick up my shit. Like we're in the middle of West Hollywood. So she's getting her ID. She's getting her credit cards and she's still running down the street. That's what I read. And he's going too. So she's like, I have to keep up with this guy. And we've seen, they both work out on the treadmill. So I'm sure they both have the cardio strength to continue running down the street. Ariana says, by the time I caught up to him, Mr. Sandoval had deleted from my phone the videos I had recorded of that FaceTime video. So I would call that breaking and entering. (sighs) Mr. Sandoval also deleted the videos from the recently deleted folder on my phone, like a real fucking cheater. He was like, I know how to make sure that none of this comes up. Not only am I deleting it, I'm going to go to recently deleted and I'm deleting it from there. Okay, he's a fucking cheater because he's not a woman and that's something we would know how to do. So if you're not a woman, you're just a cheater doing things like that. Minutes later, I texted one of my friends. Ready, Logan? Here's your moment. Minutes later, I texted one of my friends, Logan Cochran, about what happened, stating, I called her, Rachel, I called her after finding out and texted her the videos of herself from Tom's phone that I took. Tom took my phone and deleted them. I chased him all the way down San Vicente. True and correct copies of the screenshots I took of those messages are attached here to as exhibit two. We'll go down and we'll look at those. But the last paragraph before her signature says, after learning about the affair, I began informing my family and other close friends about the plaintiff's affair with Mr. Sandoval, including how I learned about it by discovering the text and FaceTime videos on Mr. Sandoval's phone. And then the text to Logan, by the way, we need to, we need to take a moment to look at this screenshot. I, as an attorney who receives screenshots from clients frequently, to me, It's not always about the words on the screen that are the most interesting. A screenshot of a text message can tell you so much about a person. So here we are looking at Ariana's screenshot. If you look over here at the time, it's 529. Okay, so we know that that's not 529 a.m. I would guarantee that's not 529 a.m. So around 529 p.m., she screenshots this text message. She has 30% battery and she's not charging it, but she's attached to Wi-Fi. So she's probably at home. Great. 30% battery seems a lot like me. Mine's usually a lot lower. Logan Cochran's name in her phone is daddy. And I'm obsessed with that. He also has a Memoji with a talk to the hand hand up, which I like. And they're showing that they're sharing location too. He's in West Hollywood at the moment of the screenshot. I would hope they were together just because I think that it's more fun to do things with your friend. So I hope that he was sitting right next to her when she took the screenshot. She also has 289 unread text messages. That would actually make me vomit 
I need to have no unread text messages at all times to the point where I won't text you back because I'll forget that I opened it, but I can't have the notification. So she's not a Capricorn, obviously. She has 289 unread messages and all her, um, she has no auto capitalization on her phone. So Ariana is a hit baddie and I just, I hope the judge does let her out of this lawsuit. The thing is, I think there's going to be a question. I think the judge is going to say there's going to be a question about whether Ariana distributed revenge porn because she sent it to Raquel. Because the judge is going to be like, well, can you prove to me that the statute um, provides an exception for sending it to the sender? You know what I mean? Like, okay, maybe Ariana didn't send it to Logan, but she did send it, but to Rachel. So I don't know. I'm just saying if the judge doesn't grant this, I bet that's going to be the reason why. I'm not the judge. Thank God. I don't know if I could be a judge. It seems really hard and like so emotional. I don't know. I don't know. Being an attorney is hard enough. I don't think I'd want to be a judge. But anyway, that's my two cents on that. So I want to hear from you guys. What do you think? Whose side are you on in the partition action? Should they sell the house? Should they not sell the house? I think they should sell the house. I think the judge should side with Ariana and sell the house. Regarding um, Katie, Ariana, and Chef Penny, I need to see that email. I need to know, was there a partnership agreement? kind of sounds like there wasn't. So I'd like to see the email. Right now, I'm firmly on... Katie and Ariana's side. It never seemed like a three musketeers deal. It always seemed to me like a Katie and Ariana deal and that chef Penny was helping. Um, but that's just me. And then last the revenge porn. Ugh, whose side are you on? I'll tell you what I'm on everyone, but Tom's I'm on everyone's side, but Tom's Sally. All right. Well, that was a fun mini sode. Um, that's all I really have. I'm trying to think of like what my criminal behavior is this week. And I don't know. I just feel like I have so many. Um, maybe it's the fact that the sun rises so fucking early in the morning. I swear it's like it'll be 5 a.m. and the sun is up and at them. Um, and so to that, I would say sun, stay down a little longer, at least until 8 a.m. Give me some time to sleep. All right. Well, I will see you guys next week with a full episode. Bye.